welcome to fishing squad can you guess where we are <laughs> let's go down and get some fishing done Right, so we're gonna kids are just feeding uh, cows. So we're gonna go we're just going down to Rock Mark now. Um, what can I expect off here? I caught a PB Bolos here last year, ten pound four ounces. Last time we come here, I think I caught the day after. I caught another one about six and a half, seven pound. Uh, there's a chance of getting one today. Obviously, dogfish will be about in force. Baits, I've got, I've got squid and mackerel. So I'll be doing like cocktails of them on a, a running ledger rig. Uh, and we've got, I'll probably put another rod out with smaller hooks on, so we can get a, a couple of some wrasse out or pollock. And we've also got two two lower rods that we're going to be uh, spinning with for pollock. Aim is to really try and get a fish foot table if we can. Um, We'll just have to see how we can, can get on basically. I've got the aim for today, but it would just be nice to get a fish on the table. I also want to demonstrate how to catch Pollock on, on lures without needing to spend fortunes. There's a few videos out there at the moment that are just bigging it, hyping it up into something that it's, it's not. It's a good sport, don't get me wrong. Lure fishing for Pollock, fantastic. But, you know, it's just being bigged up a bit. I mean, painting it wrong light, and people are getting misadvised. They need to spend a fortune. I've been fishing this headland, maybe not this particular spot, but this area for the last 30 odd year. You've never needed to spend hundreds of pounds on gear to catch Pollock. So, yeah. Fishing's not about spending money. It shouldn't be. It should be about having fun. And it being affordable for everybody. Um, so, I'm going to have to put the camera down, I think. And then we'll. Uh, I'm not going to put too much detail into what, what, what rigs we're using and stuff, just basic running ledger rig. I might put a buffer, a six foot buffer, a 50 pound line on, because last week I lost a conger eel on one of the other marks on south facing, south facing coast. Uh, I think if I had a, I'd have a stronger like, buffer in between my main line, which was a 30 pound line, and the rig, I think I'd have got it in. Well, I'm not on my own today, so I've got someone that can hold my rod if I get anything decent, and I'll be able to go down and just. Lift the, lift the trace into um, lift the trace up with fish on into um, on some rocks and land fish that way. So yeah, I'm gonna have to turn the camera for a full over. <laughs> We've got some nice uh, nice channels here, some nice kelp beds. Uh, looking good. What I like about here is if you fish to this, to this left on this point bit here. So I'm gonna put the camera down. I'm not gonna bother about the looks of it. Fish on the left hand side here. When current picks up and runs to the left, you stay right out in tide. And the particular occasion when I caught that uh, below, so I was right out in tide towards the island. Not obviously near the island, no, about 100 yards 100 yard off this point where I'd cast to. It kept my light, it keeps your line away from rocks when tide, when tide pulls. Same old story though, isn't it? You, I don't know if it's the same for everybody, but I always, always, catch fish when there's some pull on these rock marks that's why we didn't really do very well at Paul Fiskadden last night there's not enough pull there I don't think I think you'd do all right on a, on a night tide 
there. Don't get me wrong, I think Bullus and Congreels would turn up. Brilliant day, you need that rip. I can't believe how clear water is, guys. So, uh, but also, I'm going to try have a go with feathers as well on one of the beach casts before I tackle it with small baits on. So, yeah, let's see what we can see how it goes. Tide's dropping off, low tide's in about about half six. I think it's about half one now. It's only dropped off a bit. So we're going to try and get down onto, onto here. Okay, so I don't think I've ever fished here at low tide. So, just see how it goes. Straight away, doggy. It's all up down quite a bit. Um, I will get it out of him, no problem. I'll unclip my snap clip there. And we'll sort the trace out. I'm, I'm, I'm holding camera at a minute. But um, it'll be one I've thrown in that, one at sardines. But straight away, first bite up, so I'm going to sort him out, get him back, good start. Safely. But benefit of that clip again, you can just detach it off your off your um, main rig body. Take your snood off, not a problem. He's, a, he's happily unhooked. You want a big hook that? Well, fairly big hook, should I say. It was 6 L, but... You know, I, I let him take it a bit and he ended up swallowing it down. I thought, with it being a big hook, he might um, might not be able to wolf bait down quite as far as he did. I'm going to throw this in. Back he goes, no problem. Well, hopefully. <laughs> there he is. They get a bit confused when you put them back in. Yeah, he'll be alright, him. He's gone. Two, a bit bigger. Second bait, second fish. Nice one. I'm, gonna, I'm hoping I fish through these and something better turns up. I'm sure it will do. Um, if not, we'll end up with about 12 or 14 dog fishing session. So we'll see how it goes anyway. Let's crack on, get it on up, get another one. Benefit of that snap clip again. Look, you can see Barb come through fish's cheek. You don't even need to use pliers if you can clip it from you, that snap clip. When I get some cameramen down here in a minute, or camera women down here in a minute, I'll show you how to do it, how I do it again. Three, he unhooked himself, so I'm bringing him in. I'm just look in this rock wall. If you look, she has just given birth to a, one of their egg pouches, I think. Literally. You can still see like the membrane of it. Bless her. We'll get her put back because she's probably knackered as it is. She's given birth here. You can see you know, like the, the membrane still coming out of her. You know, that's interesting, isn't it? That's why we're getting them. I dropped one as well before that. I've had, I've, I would have had four, but I've had three. So there you go. It's expected it probably today on here. About what I expected so far. I had a chance to tackle that second run up yet. Cast out for Nick, because I think she's just don't pull it too much. Let it lag. She's hooked something big here. It might be a bass. This. Just gentle, gentle. It is a bass. Gentle, gentle, Nick. Just gentle. You don't need. To, you don't need to just keep your head tip up in there. That's it. Good girl. All right, quick. So there, look, bass. Beautiful bass. Yeah, that's a good that's a good eating size that. But I need to just Google something to make sure that we can tech him. Okay. Yes, because I'm not sure what the rules are. I think we're alright to tech him. It's a nice size to eat. First cast, I cast it out, she just come down. It? That's that what a session. Get in. Okay. That's dogfish number four. We've had four doggies and one bass. Number five, so we've had five doggies and one bass. He's foul up to himself, unfortunately. But again, advantage of using that snap clip on your snoot, top of your snood, just clip it off. You're not trying to get your barb back through a dodge area of fish. He's not happy, this one. Really isn't happy. But we'll uh, get him up nicely. If he doesn't, he's got more, more trace in his gob as well. It's just. Uh, you want to give it, hold them with a bit of care. They can take a bit. Everyone, we all know they can take a bit around of these, but you don't want to. You don't want to hurt him, do you, unnecessarily? Like, he'll be fine. He's got an hole in him a little bit where it looks ripped into him because he foul hooked him, son. But there's still no need to yank the line out of him like an idiot, is there? But that's doggy number five. We've had six bait ups, five fish. Nick had one cast to start with, one fish. You had a hook since, have you? You thought you had a bump a couple of times. Other than that, it's been a good session so far. So I'm going to get him back. Let's try and get some more. A tiny bit of mackerel on, you may drop off because I've only got size six up, but the camera's on, so they're quite strong. Oh. <laughs> Let's hope we don't drop off. Putting a right mess there, nearly. I mean, 
With this obviously, you will have to pull it back on its barb. It may cost you a duck. So, might need to use pliers in a minute, I don't know. No, nope, he's out. The boy, male, male dogfish that one. I think that's dogfish number six, back he does. Caught him on the tiniest piece of mackerel, it's not making a difference. What I do, I can't get rid of him for today. So, yeah, hey, I'm gonna get the cast back out, try and get another one. I'm just, uh, like I say, I've walked down about Ooh. savage gear and all this and all this expensive gear that people use for pollock fishing. Obviously, I, I come down here expecting to catch pollock, I didn't think we'd catch a bass. There's always that chance, though, isn't there? When you lure fishing on a rock mark like this. Now, I have got some savage gear lures. <coughs> Spent a lot of money on this kit and some other bits and bobs. I've got some, uh, I think the fox fox lures. That, these are all what I bought for pike fishing. You know what caught the bass? It was just cheap Amazon, like Dexter Wedge style. They're all you need for sea fishing. You're fishing a rock mark where you're going to lose lures. Don't be buying your savage gear stuff. You might as well just go like this with it. Just throw it in sea. And I'm not going to throw it in sea. Because for what it costs you, and what it'll cost, cost you in terms of losing lures, just keep it cheap and simple. Bit of metal, bit of shiny metal, not they like this. Sun shines in water, you can probably see that reflecting, I can, it's dazzling me. That's all you need. And we might not get a pollock today, I don't know. Nick's gonna have a walk around the corner, there's a bit of a reef she can cast across. Um, you know, they are easy to catch pollock most of the time, but it's still a bit early on in the season, really, for lure fishing for him. You know, they might still be feeding on the bottom of it, on, on bait type thing off it, around this area at coast. I'm not sure whether the water's quite warm enough yet. Usually end up month they, switch, they really switch on with lures. Uh, but like I say, we've got a rod out with small hooks on, so hopefully we'll get, we'll get a pollock on that. But you, you know, I'm just saying, don't be spending hundreds of pounds on lures, that's all my point is. And some of these videos on YouTube, they're wrong, we are either trying to educate people about lure fishing, See, especially in the sea. I don't really, full, I, I didn't really, I had a go at pike fishing winter as you saw in my videos. To be honest, the truth with you, I didn't really, um, I've learnt nothing really, other than you need big big lures for pike um, and a heavier setup. But I've got Nick's using the rod that I use for pike fishing, that Abu Garcia Devil. He's got a Shimano 1000, I think it, I'm not, I'm not quite exactly sure what model it is. It might be a 2000 or something like that, it's a bit bigger because I, I used to have. Sorry, this, the Shimano 1000 I had on last week, I put a bigger reel on because if you get something decent on like that, you need a that bit, of, bit of extra power. So, yeah, it's, it's, it worked well with that bass. Hopefully we get some more fish. If we don't get them this weekend, we will get them later on in summer and we'll be able to fully, I'll be able to fully um, prove what I've just said about, about the lures. So yeah, hopefully we'll get another fish. So, see what happens. Try it again on Little Rod. Hopefully it'll oh, still stay in him. Double squid I put on it this time. <coughs> I think it's on, yeah, it's on. Can you imagine looking a bullet on one of these with a side. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it just kicked a bit then for a doggy. But no, it's a doggy. So yeah, we just can't we just can't get rid of him at the minute. I think it's gonna have on my line as well. Good way to uh, wagging in. That's gonna be interesting. Whee! Like it's just come off the repair, has it? No, it's still on. I don't mind that. Yeah, it's still on. Feels weird though. It's not picking though. At least now, it's swimming towards me, that's why. Yeah, it's swimming towards me. Is it a doggy? You know, you just... You have to fish through these to get a better fish. At the minute it's all still ducking. That's not fish number seven, I think. But I'm happy. Don't get me wrong, it's early on in year still. Fish with small hooks and fish bait, this, this is what you're going to get here, isn't it? It's not just hope something different turns up. That's why I've got small hooks on to see if you know there might be a small, a small ray or something. I've never caught a ray in all time of fish in this area. We just hope that you can get something a bit different. So, I mean, it proves this this rig works as well 20 pound snood, size six hook. Back he goes, no problem. Hooks come out quite easy because they're only small, flimsy hooks. Well, I say flimsy, they're, just, they're small with a, a dainty point. I won't say flimsy, they're strong with a nice, sharp point, but it's only small. 
So a rebate. Just have a go and get another one. You got to fish. Might not come off yet because it's I don't know what dogfish number this is. Oh. I've got a bite on left hand rod as well. So we'll just keep camera on close for a minute. Half a mackerel I caught that off. Half a full mackerel, half a, just half a mackerel, yeah. It's barely hooked. It's not, it wasn't even hooked. Put that back. Let's see if that's come free on the left. It's going again, yeah. I think we might have a ball and rass on this one, one on the left, possibly. It was stuck when I struck on it last time, right in three hopefully. It's a nice finished session off with Ball and Rass. Yep, we've got fish on. Yeah. Feels like a dogfish. Yeah. So I've got limpet on one hook for Rass <coughs> and a fish bait on the other. Like I say, it was stuck. So I'm hoping it's something different, but I think it'll be a dogfish. Yep, there's a dogfish again. Quite small. Small one. Got some nice markings on it. It's not one too small. It's hooked nicely. Scissors. Pliers are there anyway. Yeah, with small looks, you might have to use your pliers. So obviously, I ain't got them clips on my snood on small looks. Because you don't fish like that. Back on feed. It's about low tide now, guys. It went a bit slack for about two hours, an hour and a half to two hours before low. After a quick start, mate. Right, I'm going to show you something now. It's well up, it's gone past the barb. So rather than try pulling it back on its part on the barb, We'll cut your snood. Cut your snood. You've got him off your rig. It's not a big deal, it's 20, the standard line, 20 pound line up length. And then what you can do is, I don't know if you can see, he's hooked in the scissors. But he's up, the hook's gone through his cheek obviously, past the barb. So what I do is just pull the, pull the hook back through because it does, it does, it's just better, isn't it, for the fish? Like that. Straight out, fish back. Not a problem, let's carry on fishing. Right, last one at session. Last cast, last bait up. What a session, for dogfish anyway. Who is that expect? I hope some people don't like them, but we love them. Obviously, we hope there's something better at show, but that's biggest, probably the biggest dogfish of the day, nice male. Um, but it's just, just nice to get rods bending really. I'm after some numbers today as well. Um, a bit disappointed we had a pollock. We had a bass. Oh, ten dogfish, one bass. Well, we're coming down to see the bass out. But I've not caught a bass off here. So we'll get this doggy back. He's in really good condition here. Really good condition. We've still got a gob full of bait. So get him back, get the rods tackled down, we'll go back, have some tea and a beer, I think. So. That's it for today then, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, at least we've had some fish. You know, we can't catch big bullus, conger eels and taupe every time. I'm sure in time we'll get we'll get some footage of them. But until until then, still got a couple of sessions to have this weekend. We'll probably see more of these guys. Until then, keep safe, tight lines, and above all have a good one, I'll see you soon.